Alright guys, today I'm going to test and review the Modus Audio UH205PW1. If you are in the market for an 8 inch high end woofer, you really got to check this out. I am really impressed by this. Let me show you why. First thing I wanted to do is show you how beautiful these things are. So I'm just ripping into the packaging here. It is, they have been opened before and re-taped up and everything so the packaging is a little bit uh, abused and they made a long trip back from Minnesota to Canada with me. So they're a little beat up. But here's a quick look at the packaging and just unwrapping them. Now they come with a cover like a lot of drivers do, a plastic cover over the cone. These are particularly thick and the the writing modus on them is very crisp and very high quality. I just had to point that out because they really are. The baskets on these are very nice. They um, advertise an aerodynamic basket and acoustically transparent spider. And I, you can see this on the spec sheet that they mention this. And I agree, it, it looks to be the case. You can see right through that spider and, and there looks to be zero airflow inhibition. Um, there are leads on both sides of the, the spider to create balance. Uh, here's a slow-mo of uh, a 10 hertz sine wave going through the woofer. I just think this looks so cool, so I had to share it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing I'm about 12 millimeters point to point X max here or 6 millimeters X max. It's rated at 8 and a quarter millimeters, I think. You can see the voice coil coming out of the magnetic gap there right at the bottom, and the spider is really flexing away but seems to be in great composure. I had to build a uh, test box. Uh, first, to get the TS parameters, I needed a small sealed box. So I've got a, a bigger box here that I've put a window in the middle of to create a smaller sealed chamber and that's what I'm sealing off right now so I can get those TS parameters so I'm just putting the baffle on at the moment getting everything ready for that test don't want to lose track of which one is which so I mark it with an S1 for sample 1 and then I just hook it up and I'm ready to take the TS parameters now it goes into the box and I tell the software what size of sealed enclosure I'm using so that it can calculate VAS. And I did this for both drivers. Okay. I want the driver on its side when I take this test. Okay, so um, here we can see free air and then in the sealed box and you can see what happens to the impedance, um, especially the resonance frequency. Um, it moves up a little bit, that's expected. In general, this woofer has a very low FS of around 30 hertz. Um, that's measured a little bit higher than spec, but there is a review by uh, Audio Express, and this is also the result they got, right around 29 or 30 hertz. Here we have the TS parameters and you can see that for a 6 ohm driver the um, DCR resistance makes a lot of sense and the, the TS parameters match at least Audio Express's results quite well as well as the manufacturer's results so that's good. I'll include a link to the Audio Express review that has a lot of the same testing I do here so you can see how they match. These plastic covers are so hard, they actually support the woofer without touching the surround. Sample two, here we go. So I did the same thing. I did it free air and then in the box. Um, this chart just shows uh, the TS parameters again. Um, the DC resistance matches a six ohm spec and we have really, you know, pretty good match to the Audio Express results as well as the factory specs. And in general, these TS parameters look very good. Overall, I'm happy that both drivers have similar results and that the TS parameters are looking like they can make a lot of bass out of a reasonably sized box. Okay, now if we look at both impedance um, plots for each driver, sample 1 and 2 overlaid with each other, you can see we're getting pretty good agreement between the two. Um, as the image says, green is sample 2, blue is sample 1. 
We're seeing very good consistency here, which is expected for this price of driver. It's not perfect, but it's also not unusual to see this kind of um, difference between the two. I'm being really picky here only because it's a boutique driver, it's quite costly. So you can see that the impedance does seem to diverge a little bit as you move up in frequency from about basically nothing to nearly half an ohm as you move up past a thousand hertz. Certainly the difference we're seeing here is nothing like we saw on the Fountech, which is also an expensive driver. And, and th those drivers were av actually advertised as being matched. Something to point out here is that the impedance minimum is at about 120 hertz and it's 7 ohms. Um, I don't understand why this is a nominal 6 ohm driver other than DC resistance is below 6 ohms, but clearly this is a nominal 8 ohm driver, which is actually a good thing in my opinion because two of these can be used in parallel. So I kind of like this. I'm even tempted to pick up another pair to be able to do a three-way like that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut holes in that window brace in between the two uh, chambers so that I can use the whole chamber. This is going to suck. Um, there, and I did that, and, and now the whole box will act as a larger volume. So I'm just going to put some silicone down so that I can attach the baffle. To carry on with my testing, I'm going to turn this into a ported enclosure now. I'll just screw this in place. I'm not going to get too picky about making sure it's glued on, real secure, anything. This is entirely just for the testing. So based on those TS parameters I just measured, 50 watts, 43 liters is my test cabinet and 33 hertz tuning with this port here, just one of these, should get me this result. That's a close up of the port. So I just load up sample one. And there's uh, an impedance sweep to show us how the port tuning did. And we can see that the tuning frequency is roughly 34 hertz. So we're very accurate with what the uh, box model predicted. Okay, so let's take this thing outside and get some good measurements. Because this is a woofer that's meant to be used in a three-way, I needed to go outside. I couldn't do my usual measurements in the shop because I need to get a more reflection-free measurement to a lower frequency. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm not going to take the off-axis measurements outside, but I am going to get the on-axis sensitivity and overall response. Um, here I'm going to hook up the wires and get the one meter distance from the, from the woofer to the microphone, which is really challenging when you're eight feet up on a ladder and trying to reach out there and, and get all this. And it was getting late at the time. I started this around 8.30 at night and the sun was setting fast. Oh, it is getting late. I'm trying to cover all this in, in one hour. This is how mistakes happen. I gotta slow down. And here we go with sample two. You can see it's getting darker. Like I said, mistakes can happen here and I've never dropped a, a, a box out on my ladder yet, but there's a first for everything. And again, you could barely hear the tone there because the camera was quite a ways away. So here's the results. Um, wow, I, I'm really impressed. This is, in my opinion, this is an 8 ohm driver, and we're looking at a sensitivity of about 88, 89, maybe 90 dB above the baffle step range, and below the baffle step range, which is happening at about 500 hertz, you can see it drops down, um, we're looking at about 83, maybe as low as 82 as you get down around 150 hertz. 82, 83 dB is pretty good for um, a free field measurement like this and I'm quite happy with the sensitivity considering this is an 8 ohm driver that can dig deep. Um, you have to ignore from about 120 hertz down again because reflections. This is a lot better than I get in my shop. I've windowed it to about 60 hertz so ignore from 120 down. Okay so now I'm going to do a ground plane measurement. You can see it's very dark. I have the settings on my cramp camera cranked right up so you could even see what I'm doing. I'm just laying the microphone on the ground and the speaker on the ground. I use a sine sweep 
because I find I get better results uh, when doing low bass frequency response like this. And holy smokes, um, I am so happy with this. You can see that we have excellent extension all the way down to 30 hertz. Um, it's smooth. Um, can, this is this is better than the box model predicted. So if we just jump back to our impedance results, you can see here the tuning frequency is 34 hertz, and the box model um, shows again a tuning of about 33, 34 hertz. Um, has kind of a bit of a peak and then a sharp roll off. You know, with that in mind, go back to the ground plane measurement. This is better than the than the box model predicted, and this is an excellent result. This is truly high fidelity here. Um, this is the kind of woofer most manufacturers would dream to have in their speakers. In my opinion, this is what makes the woofer worth every penny that it costs. Okay, so I'm going to go into the shop and get some off-axis measurements here. So I'm measuring a little closer. I don't get the gating quite as low, so the frequency response is... Um, from about 200 and 250 hertz and up is where it's reliable. But you can see here we get excellent off-axis behavior. Again, like the bass response, this is outstanding. Um, we got usable response all the way up to 1500 hertz. Nothing funny going on. Um, a lot of 8-inch drivers are just totally losing control by 1500 hertz. And this is staying fairly well composed. And it is... I, I think this thing is usable in a two-way believe it or not it'll take a special tweeter to be able to use it in a two-way but it is a possibility um, so if you need a really high-end good base two-way this is a driver to look at and um, you can see we got excellent results here I think I might use it in a speaker like this um, this is the test box from the Vifa mid and Fountech ribbon tweeter and I think it might be a good way to go there you have it guys I think you can see why I'm so excited about this woofer I'm going to use this in an upcoming three-way and kind of let you follow along in the project. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but it'll evolve and you can see my thought process as we go along. Hang tight. I'm also going to have a review of a 12-inch uh, mid-bass kind of mid-woofer uh, from DeNovo Audio. It's called the Magnum 12 and it's going to be coming up soon. And I'm also really impressed with what I'm seeing so far on that one. I'm not quite done, but it will be coming soon. And I'm also going to get to some tweeters and things like that to round out the testing a little more. I'm just starting out, so we're at like four or five drivers so far. And if you want to see more about the drivers I might use with this woofer, um, check out over here the Vifa mid review that I did and the Fountech tweeter review that I did. And I'm thinking about using these drivers in a three-way. Also, if you can click here, you can subscribe to see what I do with it in the future as well as other projects and sound audio technical things that I tell you about. So please subscribe, like the video, comment if you um, have anything you want to say, especially if you have any suggestions of driver reviews, please comment below and I'll take those seriously. Thanks guys, bye.